Well, hi guys. I'm going to try and get through this uh, test that I gave you guys from last year. And I hope it's the same one anyway, but even if it's not the same one, we've worked on something very similar to this. So let's just get started with this. I've got here a function that I've got some information about its derivatives, and I also have information about a specific point. And I want to write the third degree Taylor polynomial for the f of x, which means I have to write a polynomial that looks like this, f of 0 plus f prime of 0 x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared and then plus f triple prime of 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed. That's what I want to write. And where I'm going to get these pieces of information right here is from what they give me. So I just have to know the formula and I'll throw it in there. All right, so here we go. The third degree Taylor polynomial is abbreviated p sub 3 of x, and it is equal to f of 0 is 5, f prime of 0 is negative 3. I put that right there in front of the x. f double prime of 0 goes on top of 2 factorial, and I might make that times x squared, and then f triple prime of 0 goes on top of 3 factorial, and I put that in front of x cubed. And so I can simplify this to 5 minus 3x plus 1 half x squared plus um, 4 over 6 is 2 thirds x cubed. Now use the polynomial to approximate f of point 0.1. Notice I could, there's no way I could find out exactly where f of point 0.1 was, but I could use the Taylor polynomial and I could say f of 0 0.1 is approximately equal to the Taylor polynomial at point 0.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in point 0.1 into all of those x's. And without a calculator, I guess I could do this, but I'm not going to do this right now because that's 3 tenths and that's 1 over 200. So I have like 5 minus 3 tenths plus, uh, that's 0.1 squared of course is 1 one hundred, so that's 1 over 200 and 0.1 cubed is 1 over 1,000, so that would be 2 over 3,000. I could make common denominators and do that, but without a calculator I don't need to simplify that. The last one is Lagrange error bound. If I'm going to use this to actually approximate, notice it's not exactly, but I can use the Lagrange error bound, which says that the absolute value of my error is less than where I'm approximating it minus my center, that's absolute value, to the next derivative's power. So the next derivative would have been the fourth over four factorial times this z, where z is the absolute value of the maximum value of my next derivative. And so this would be 0.1 to the fourth is 1 over 10,000. So this would be 3 over 24, 200, is that 240,000 is 24 times 10,000. What is that? Uh, that's 240,000, isn't it? Okay. So that is the uh, maximum error. Notice that's, that's not very bad. You know, we know that this value is, is pretty darn close to the actual value of the function. Okay, um, so let's see here. Let's go on to our next question. Um, I've got to go backwards for that. So now we've got, we're going to go backwards and we're going to try and find pieces of information about f from the Taylor series expansion. So we need to look at something that's already multiplied out and go backwards into the specific pieces of information about f. So let's do that. So notice here I don't have a constant term so I could call that 0. Okay, so f of 0 is the first constant term which is 0. F prime of 0 is the coefficient of your x term. So it's the number in front of your x term. Gosh, that's easy. That's 1. Now what's not easy is the 17th derivative at 0. If I went all the way out there to that term, the 17th derivative at 0 over 17 factorial times x to the 17th, all of this would be the coefficient of my x to the 17th term. If you expanded this, your x to the 17th term would have a 1 17th in front of it. So the coefficient would be 1 17th. So I would say that the 17th derivative at 0 divided by 17 factorial worked out to be 1 17th. And when I cross multiply, I get that it's 16 factorial. Okay, now we've got to find an interval of convergence. And so we're going to do our 
ratio test, so I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity on the general term, and the general term is right here. So absolute value, n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1, and then I've got the x to the n is on top here, times, now we're going to do the reciprocal, so we're going to have 3 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n. So let's clean this up here a little bit. The limit is n goes to infinity of. I'm going to bring my n's together, n plus 2 over n plus 1, because that's what really matters when I do my n approaching infinity. And let's take a look at, I'm going to have a, um, oh, what did I not do here? I didn't do x to the n plus 1. Shame on me. There should be an x to the n plus 1 right there. So I'm going to have an x on top and a 3 on bottom. Now you take the limit as n goes to infinity, since these n's match, and they both have a degree of 1, we're going to look at the ratio of their coefficients, which is just 1, so my answer to my limit is x over 3. And you always set this less than 1 for our ratio test to converge, and so we're going to expand this out, negative 1 is less than x over 3 is less than 1. Multiply both sides by 3, and we get what's called an interior interval of convergence. But now I need to check my endpoints. So I'm going to plug in negative 3 for x and see what kind of series I'm dealing with. Negative 3 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1. Now that's the same thing as negative 1 to the n, and then the 3's to the n's are going to cancel, leaving me with just a 3 on bottom. And I have an alternating series here, but my terms are not getting smaller. As n gets larger, n plus 1 over 3 gets larger. It doesn't get smaller. So I cannot include that endpoint at negative 3. Uh, the same thing is going to happen when you try 3. When you try 3 in for x, we're, we are going to get not even an alternating sequence or an alternating series. We just get n plus 1 over 3, which diverges by the nth term test. So there is your interval of convergence. And part B was find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x minus 1 third all over x. I'm going to go ahead and do this um, the, the easy way. You plug in your value for your limit first. That's how you evaluate limits. So this would be f of 0 minus 1 third all over x. Sorry, zero. I'm, I'm blaming that on this cramp I have in my foot right now, which is killing me. Anyway, you didn't need to know that. TMI. All right, f of zero is going to be the number right in front in your power series expansion. So that's one-third minus one-third over zero. And I get zero over zero, which means it's indeterminate, which means I can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and try the limit again. Now when I plug in 0, I get f prime of 0, which we should know is the coefficient of the x term. So that's 2 over 3 squared, which is 2 ninths. Okay, get to question 4 here. Uh, first three terms of... Ah, I got lost. <laughs> la, la, la. Already did that. I haven't done that. Okay, so now I am being silly. I can't find my page. Be, bear with me here. We're going back there, back to this. I need to find question four. I apologize about this. Okay, sorry for my, my silliness there. All right, uh, first three terms of the Maclaurin series for f of x equals x times sine of x squared. You should know that sine of x starts with x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Sine of x squared would be replace all of those x's with an x squared. And you better do this in parentheses or you won't get your exponents right. Okay, so that's going to be x squared minus x to the 6th over 3 factorial plus x to the 10th over 5 factorial. Now finally, x times the sine of x squared would be multiply through by x. I'm going to get x cubed minus x to the 7th over 3 factorial plus x to the 11th over 5 factorial. 
All right, next question on number five. We've got here a geometric series. The first term is one because that's what, remember, you have a sub one over one minus r. There's your first term and here's your common ratio. And that multiple, that that geometric series is a sub 1 and then the next term is a sub 1 times r and then a sub 1 times r squared and blah blah blah. So if I turn this into 1 over 1 minus negative 2x this becomes 1 and now we're going to multiply times the ratio 1 times negative 2x is negative 2x and then multiply times the ratio again and then you could keep going. I only asked for the first three terms so there they are and then you should know the general term for the 1 plus x plus x squared. The general term for the geometric series is just x to the n. What we're going to do is we're going to replace that x with a negative 2x. So there's that one. Get to my clicker. Okay, now I've got another geometric series. And the question is, what if we use just the first three terms to approximate f of x? What's the, what's the alternating series error bound? Well, the first three terms is right here. And the alternating series says that your maximum value of your error is less than simply the next term. The, the very next term we left off is this x to the sixth one, even though it's negative on the absolute value. So this is going to be 0.1 to the sixth. Next question says if G is F's antiderivative, find the first three non-zero terms and the general term for the Maclaurin series for G of X. Well, that's going to be first three non-zero terms would be the integral of 1, the integral of X squared, and the integral of X to the fourth. So you just term by term integrate that and then integrate the general term We'll have negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. What is this function? Well, we just integrated 1 over 1 plus x squared. And you should remember from several months ago that this represents arctan. So we have come up with a power series expansion for arctan. All right, my last question here is a really long one. Um, to, to figure out, but we have to tell whether f has a relative max min or neither at zero. So I need to find something about the derivatives. Horizontal tangent line at x equals zero, this means that f prime is zero. So we could have a max or a min. Uh, what we need to figure out is what is f double prime? If f double prime is positive, it's a minimum. If f double prime is negative, I've got a maximum. Here's how we find the second derivative. We're going to plug in 2 for this. If you plug in 2, you're going to get a negative number because negative 1 cubed is negative. The rest of this really doesn't matter. So we know that since f prime is 0 and f double prime is negative, then we have a maximum, a relative maximum. All right, now the third degree Taylor polynomial is going to be sort of long to write. I'm going to have to write f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 times x squared and that's over 2 factorial and then plus f triple prime of 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed. Now let's see if we know anything about this. Do I know f of 0? Yes, it's 6. Do I know f prime of 0? Yeah, it, they told me a horizontal tangent line so that goes there. Now here I need to find the second derivative so I guess I should have finished this. So if I plug in 2 for n I'm going to get 3 factorial I'm going to get negative 1 to the third times 3 factorial over 5 squared times 1 squared. So this is going to be negative 6 25ths. That number goes right there. Don't forget that's still divided by 2. So negative 6 25ths over 2 factorial x squared. Now let's plug in 3 for n to figure out the third derivative at 0. And that would be negative 1 to the fourth. So that's positive. I have 4 factorial over 5 cubed times 2 squared, and that's 24 over 125 times 4 is, what is that? 125 for 250, 500. So that's going to be 12 over 250, which is a 6 over 125. I, think, I hope I did that right. I'm sort of in a hurry because I'm fixing dinner at the same time. 
over 3 factorial times x cubed. Okay, last thing we need to do is find the radius of convergence and get down here to go a little further down. We need to find our general term so we can do our ratio test. Our general term will look like this. Negative 1 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial over 5 to the n times n minus 1 squared. That's the nth derivative for f. That will be over n factorial and then times x to the n. So I'll put the x to the n up here. So let's clean that up just a little bit. Negative 1 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial times x to the n all over n factorial 5 to the n n minus 1 squared. Well, that's going to be a bear to do, but let's just get it done. Okay, so I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value, so negative 1 to the n goes bye-bye. So I'm going to have n plus 2 factorial x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial 5 to the n plus 1 and then n plus 1 minus 1 is just n squared. Multiply that by the reciprocal. And let's see what happens. Okay. So I'm going to get my n's together. n plus 2 factorial over n plus 1 factorial leaves me with n plus 2. So I've taken care of that n factorial over n plus 1 factorial leaves me with n plus 1, so I've taken care of that. 5 to the n over 5 to the n plus 1 leaves me with a 5 on the bottom. I'll just go ahead and bring it over here. So I've taken care of that. And then my x's, I've got an x on top, so I've taken care of those. And then I've got what? An n minus 1 squared over an n squared. Ah, okay, sorry. That's really messy. I apologize. All right, let's take a look at the limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to have an n cubed on top and an n cubed on bottom. Since those match, it's the ratio of the coefficients, and that's just all going to 1. So my limit of my ratio is x over 5. You set this less than 1. Go ahead and separate it. So I get negative 5 is less than x is less than 5. Since this was centered at 0, I went 5 left and 5 right. My radius of convergence is 5. So make sure you know your 4 power series expansion for e to this x, sine of x, cosine x, and 1 over 1 minus x. We've done a lot of practice. I hope to see some really good grades on this test tomorrow. I'll see you then.